Hey fellas, I haven't found many good resources on the internet documenting using the new ASRock H110 Pro BTC motherboard to build mining rigs. So I figured I'd show off my rig uh, to see if it can help anybody. Here is my outdoor mining rig. It currently has 11 GPUs. It has eight uh, NVIDIA GeForce GPUs. Most of them are uh, the 1070 variants, uh, which I think are probably the best ones for mining. I do have one used uh, 1060 here. I don't know what brand is that. So there are um, seven 1070s of different brands and one 1060, six gigabyte in this mining rig uh, in combination with three AMD GPUs. I have one here. This is a 580. There's a 580 right behind that as well too. And this is a 570. And these AMDs have been uh, overclocked using the BIOS mod to draw less power uh, and to give a higher hash rate. So uh, there's eight of the GPUs on top. And I have three kind of jerry-rigged on the bottom. Um, I'm just hoping this is a, a thermally efficient way to place them. Um, so these GPUs are connected to the motherboard which is this new thing that came out about a month ago. It's the ASRock H110 Pro BTC. The important thing about this is that it has uh, 13 PCI slots and they're all squeezed together, which is pretty annoying, but it works. Here I have uh, my 11 risers connected to it and you can see they're just right up against each other. Um, just as a precaution, I had to put tape uh, around them to ensure that it's insulated um, but uh, I realized that you don't actually need to do that when I started building it. I just did it as a precaution. Um, the weird thing about this board is that it takes little Molex connectors here too, one here and one here, to keep the voltage of the PCI slots stable. So I recommend you do plug these um, Molex connectors in when you are using it. The uh, ASRock webpage recommends you, you use two separate cables that are just dedicated to these Molex. And you make sure that these cables are connected to the PCU, this one, which is powering the entire board. That's an important thing to maintain stability. Uh, I have only four gigabytes of RAM. I've tried this build with eight gigabytes. There's really no difference. So I might as well just use four and save some money right there. Um, and that's about it. Uh, the, the power supply, the PSU, is an important concept in mining and this is something that has taken a lot of my time so I just want to talk about this a little bit. Um, for this particular 11 GPU rig I have a total of three running. This one, this one, and this one. You kind of want to get platinum power supplies which I, I did here when you can. I just had some gold power supplies laying around so that's why I'm using it here. So this 650X, 650X are both gold power supplies. The one on the bottom powers these three GPUs, three 1070, 1070s, uh, and this one powers three GPUs, I forget which one up there, and this one powers the motherboard and the rest. Now, how do you know how much power supplies do you need? Uh, the general rule of thumb is to use about 60% of whatever number that the, the power supply is advertising. So for example, this Corsair AX760 is advertising a 760 watt uh, GPU power draw max um, but since we're running these mining rigs 24-7 you kind of want it at maybe like 50 to 75 percent so just use 60 percent of that number uh, just to be safe I calculate that to be about 400 and uh, you get and then you plug in 400 watts worth of power uh, uh, into into this thing so for these for example um, although I couldn't really measure the 1070s uh, from the wall, I calculated it to be about 105, 110 watts each after the MSI afterburner, uh, overclocking, under undervolting, actually not undervolting, the underclocking uh, of the core. Uh, so underclocking of the core reduces uh, the power draw and it's about 110 watts, I believe. Uh, for the RX 580 and 570s, you can actually measure the power consumption with uh, GPU-Z, and these are measured to be about, let's say, 90 watts. So each of the, these are about 90, and you just add them up. Uh, for, my, 
for this, I added maybe there's four cards will equal to 60% of this. Three cards will add up to about 60% of this, and that's how you connect them. I really like these Corsair uh, power supply units because they're modular. They You can pull out the wires you don't need and only plug in the wires you do need, which is pretty uh, nice in a tight mining rate because you don't have extra wires laying around. Um, oh, another thing about power supply is how do you connect uh, different ones? Um, if you can afford to buy just one power supply, I recommend you do that. If you're like me, you have several smaller ones laying around, it might be worth a shot to uh, use them together. Uh, but it, it can cause system instability depending on how you connect these wires. So the thing that I learned after trial and error is that these uh, riser power supply and the main power supply, the PCIe power supply for each card should both come from the same power supply. So here, so for example, this one would power this video card's riser power, which is this, this cable here, and it should power this card through the PCIe as well too. If you mix them around, uh, the system will still boot up but I think this causes a lot of system instability after running it for a few hours because uh, and I'm just surmising from you know my my forums prowling around I'm surmising that there's small voltage differences uh, from the different power supplies uh, that can cause some kind of electrical hang that crashes a, a GPU and uh, since I've kind of uh, made this theory and followed the theory my systems have been much more stable since then. Um, and let's look at this here. So this is how you jumpstart a power supply without having to connect it. Okay, you do the paperclip method. And if you want to Google this, uh, you can find many examples. But pretty much, you just look for, you can see it here. Just look for the hole, the connector that doesn't have uh, an electrical conduction in it. That's the empty socket. Okay, so it's this one. I don't know if you can see it here, but that's the empty socket here. You count two to the right, so one, two, okay? And then you plug the next two with paper clips, one, two, and uh, it looks kind of looks like this, okay? And, and for more details, just Google this on, on the internet and you'll find many examples of this. So put the paper clip, secure the paper clip with a zip tie, and you put like a like a thermal, like electrical insulator over it to kind of secure it from the outside world. And voila, you have a power supply unit that once you plug it in here, you can control the on and off with this back switch here. Off and on. Pretty neat. So this is my unit and I have a total of three power supplies and it's running just fine. This is about maybe like four hours runtime now. Um, what else do we got? Oh, and uh, how it's connected to the internet. So I have an ethernet here, um, connected this, but it's actually connected wireless. And I know a lot of the people, this is a, what do you call this? This is a, it's not a router. Yeah, I don't know, I'm not a computer guy, so I don't know, but this is the thing that spreads the internet. And this thing goes to this wire here and this is a extender that I've hacked and I've made it into uh, kind of a repeater. So this is picking up a wireless signal from inside my apartment right there. And um, I rarely get any stale shares, guys. So running mining uh, through Wi-Fi is totally doable despite what everyone else says on the internet. Um, Oh, so just a little bit about the structure of my rig, because I don't see this design much. This is my original design, but I'm sure this is, has been done before and done better. i just never seen it uh, online before. So this is one of these typical storage cage. This one is the Martha Stewart brand, okay? And you, these are just little cubes. They're like about one and a half foot by one and a half foot. And you can just like stack them up how you please. And I'm, the way I'm doing it is there's a stack of three here okay and I like it because it's steel frame and it lets you mount things on it so I just zip tie I just zip tie my video cards on it it's pretty secure see just zip tie them pretty neat and after I 
secure the video cards, I wrapped this with a bug net. This is just a window net. Um, you can get a big roll for like 10 bucks off of Home Depot. And I just zip tie these in too. And by doing this, I hope to keep large dust particles out and to keep bugs out because I intend to run this outside. I can't imagine people running these mining rigs indoors because it's really hot. So this is the whole unit. I can fit three more GPUs, but I just don't have that right now. And it's just sitting in the corner of my balcony. It doesn't bother my family a lot and the heat dissipates outside. Okay. And uh, all of the power comes from the outside outlet, which I pay for, unfortunately, which that sucks. But this is my setup, and it's pretty cool. Now, this is my second rig, too. This video is not about that, but this is just another 7 GPU rig. Um, doesn't really have really, really any problems, so it's not really interesting. Um, One more thing, I'm using a solid state drive to install my Windows 10 in there, and it works just fine. This is a very old drive from a, a old PC part. And this is what I think is cool about mining, is that we get to recycle uh, old PC parts and give them life, uh, which is nice for the environment. Um, by the way, you can use mechanical drive for mining too, especially the laptop variants, because the power draw of these mechanical drives are very similar to uh, these SSD drives. So don't be afraid to use mechanical drives if you need to. Um, I am using it for my second mining rig here. Oh, I can't see it. This one right here. See? This is a mechanical drive and it works just fine. So here is how I set up the BIOS for the motherboard H110BTC Pro. Um, you really don't have to do much about it. Uh, the, the most important thing is the PCIe. Uh, speed should be set to Gen 2. Uh, Generation 1 also works too, um, but I just decided to try Gen 2 for this one and it's stable. Um, leaving this on auto tends to produce instability, um, so uh, I had to find out the hard way. It took lots of time, but uh, this is what I recommend for all motherboards. And you always enabled uh, 4G. Um, it should be in the same setting screen as the, the PCIe as stuff as well too. Uh, 4G means that it allows the motherboard to use more than uh, four video cards. So always have that enabled when uh, you have more than four video cards in a mining rig. Uh, mine has 11. Now this is how I'm connecting to... This is how I'm connecting to my rig in the balcony. I'm using an app called TeamViewer and it's free for personal use. So you just connect it and you get a screen like this. This is the desktop. Let's see. And I'm using Ethereum, uh, I mean Claymore Dual Ethereum Miner, the version 10, the newest one. Um, this is how the, the bat file should look like, okay? This is a start bat. Um, you should edit it to make sure it looks like this. Okay, with the AMD cards, you always set X, uh, the recommended uh, thing. I honestly don't even know what these things mean, but you just have to have it. You add a little timeout, Thing here so that the mining doesn't start right away when the computer boots up it waits it waits about three seconds to let other stuff boot up just as a, this is just a precaution and you make sure you have only this line uh, available and nothing else okay this will tell the miner to use the config file okay which is much more easy to manage um, to put your stuff in okay uh, the, the more important things for me were ETH, uh, ETHI command, you gotta play around with that to maintain stability. Uh, it's usually not at eight. That makes it stable. Eight is the fastest. And again, uh, LIDAG uh, and GSR serializes the number of uh, video cards that turn on at once. All things help with uh, stability. But I'm sure you can find more info about that stuff somewhere else. DCRI is also important. Uh, AMD GPUs, they don't dual mine very well. It sucks, you know, so I have to put it at five to maximize Ethereum hash rate. Uh, but my NVIDIA's, you know, you just keep them at 30, the default, and it, it dual mines uh, the, the second coin and Ethereum perfectly. Um, for every window, you want to open this window, shell, colon, startup, 
Okay, this tells you what apps to start up when the window starts. And uh, you put your little shortcut to your miner. So every time this computer turns on, it starts mining by itself. And you can also have it the Windows uh, restart in every 24 hour period too, which kind of keeps the, the stability going. So that's what I have going on as well too. Um, MSI Afterburner, everyone has this. Uh, here are my settings uh, that are stable for my 1070s, okay? 70 minus 300, 450. This 300 is probably the most important thing in terms of reducing power draw. And this, I don't I'm kind of disappointed. I mean, because everybody on the forum says that they can increase it to like 600, 700, and whatnot, and get hash rates of 30. I wish I could do that, but it never worked for me. Um, somewhere between 450 and 500 is stable for me, and I get a hash rate of about 28. Okay, let's start mining to see if things are going okay. Okay, all 11 cards are detected. That was quick. Drop. That's my hash rate. It's about 280. Mm, we're just gonna do it higher. My three AMD cards, you know, they're pretty high. They're about 29 millihash, and seeing as they're only about 230 bucks retail, they're the more efficient card to buy, but they're just hard to get. And I feel like it was harder to make it stay. Uh, to build a stable mining rig with AMD cards versus the GeForce NVIDIAs. Because NVIDIAs, you just plug in and it works. So if you're a newbie, I recommend maybe start off with NVIDIA, actually. Uh, and most of my 1070s have a hash rate of about 28. Okay, things are looking pretty well. Things are mining. I've actually done this before. Um, I've, I know it's, it's stable for at least six hours. Um, but I'm just showing you another instance of the startup uh, just for a dramatic effect. Okay. Well, I hope you guys like my video. Um, I hope it helps somebody because I sank in many hours doing this. Um, but um, it's a hobby. It's a labor of love.